G'day everyone, it is that time again to do a song tutorial based on a request from YouTube and we've had a request from Wrong Side of 50 Drummer. Love the username by the way, aka Gary and he wants to see a tutorial of Rain by the Cult. Now this is an absolute ripper song in its own right but it's also a really, really good one for beginner drummers. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for the first eight bars of the song, he's just playing that combination of kick drum and hi-hat, where he's got a quarter note pattern going on the kick drum, on the one, the two, the three, and the four, and the hi-hat, he's playing 16th notes. But on the hi-hats, he's accenting the and of every quarter note. So he plays and And the only other thing he does is in the middle of those eight bars, so at the end of the fourth bar, Rather than play that accent on the and, he plays a hi-hat lift. So a nice, simple, but effective introduction to the song. And after those eight bars, he then plays eight bars of what I'm gonna call the riff groove, the groove that you're playing when the guitar's playing the signature riff of this song. And that looks like this. So all you're playing there is a straight eighth note groove. You've got the bass on the one and the three and the snare on the two and the four. Now the only thing he does differently is every fourth bar, and this is a bit of a theme for this song, a lot of things happen every fourth bar, but every fourth bar of that straight groove that he's playing, he just plays an extra bass drum on the and of three. So he plays the bass on the one, and then he plays it on the three and, and the snare on the two and four. So that fourth bar, which happens twice because we have eight bars in totals for this section, looks like this. So again, pretty simple. He's just keeping that nice and solid groove. And we keep that straight eighth note beat going into the verse. The only difference is here, every four bars, we're gonna play a lift on the hi-hat on the and of four instead of playing that double bass drum. So the eight bars of the verse look like this. And so those eight bars will get us through the verse and into what I'm gonna call the pre-chorus because it comes before the chorus. But in this section, he is gonna change the groove again. And all he's doing is adding a bass drum on the and of four. So the groove becomes dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum. Probably just play it. And after eight bars of that groove, we move into the chorus. And in the chorus, you have two options. You can either play eighth notes on the hi-hat or you can play 16th notes as we did when we played the introduction. And the chorus groove is the same as the riff groove, which sounds like this.
So what I just played there is the chorus in its entirety, so it's 12 bars. Now you notice that I played 16th notes on the hi-hats. If you don't want to play them, just play 8th notes, that'll fit perfectly fine. But if you do play the 16th notes, make sure that you play two sets of four bars with 16ths, and then you switch to 8ths for the last four bars. Because the chorus is 12 bars, but there's kind of a feel change after 8, so it fits a lot better. If you play 16th note for those eight bars and then four bars, you just change it up so it has a bit of a different feel. And then we move into the verse, which is exactly the same as the one we played before. So eight bars in total and every fourth bar we do a hi-hat lift on the and of four. Then we go to the pre-chorus, which again is exactly the same. Eight bars total, this time we're playing the groove with the extra bass drum on the and of four and we're playing it every time. Again, eight bars in total. And then we go to the second chorus, and this second chorus is a bit different to the one we played first. The second chorus is 16 bars in total, not 12 like the first. And it doesn't have the two sections with kind of different feels. So this time, it's just the same as the first eight bars that we played in the first chorus, but you just double them up. So if you were playing 16th notes, you just play 16th notes for all 16 bars. And if you want to play 8th notes, you just play 8th notes. And then we go into the bridge, which I'll play for you now, and then we'll break it down. So the bridge in total is 16 bars, and the first eight bars, we're just repeating what we played for the intro. So we have 16th notes going on the hi-hat, bass drum is playing the quarter notes, and we're accenting on the hi-hat the ands of each quarter note. Again, you throw in that hi-hat lift on the and of four of every fourth bar, so it happens twice. And once you've played that, it moves into the snare drum, toms, marching kind of section. And what you're playing here is 16th notes on the snare drum with a particular accent pattern. And then every four and and of four, you're just moving your right hand to the floor tom and then to another tom, the top tom or the middle tom is probably better if you have one. And that's the only movement you need to do. So it'll be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The only addition to that is the kick drum continues those quarter notes. And for the last bar of that snare and tom section, Rather than do the four and on the toms, just do a nice simple snare drum fill or a build or something like that. Don't make it too complicated, keep it nice and simple. That's what he's doing in this song. Something like that. Now when we come out of that bridge, we move into the final section of the song, the outro or Playing along with that riff, they just do it for a longer period of time. So it's 24 bars, and you're just playing the same riff groove, which is this one. So that was eight bars of it, but you do that three times, that gives you 24 bars all up. Now in the recording of this song, he keeps this outro section still pretty clean, pretty straight, and keeps the fills pretty minimal. 
But if you wanted to, this is a really good place for you to start to get a little bit spicier on the kit, maybe throw in some longer fills, mix it up a little bit, play a bit of 16th notes on the hi-hat if you want to in one section. But all you've got is the guitar riff and the vocals going on a loop. So it makes it a really good spot for you as the drummer to get a little bit more creative. Now you play through those 24 bars and the ending of this song on the 24th bar looks like this. So for that last bar, he plays a bass drum and a cymbal on the one. He plays a flam on the snare on the two. And then on the three, the and of three and the four, he plays bass drums and cymbals again. So you'd have. And then following the three and four, it's just a bass drum and a cymbal on the one of the following bar and that's it. Now the only thing is in the recording, the whole band slows this bar down. So it's not one, two, three and four, one. It doesn't end that sharp. It kind of drags and slows down. And then once your cymbals have finished ringing out, all he's doing is playing a on the floor tom and the kick drum. And that's it. So to play along with Rain by the Cult, that is all the grooves that you need to know. Now in terms of the fills, he keeps them really simple, really minimalist throughout the entire song. So what I'll do now is I'll put up the notation and I'll play along with some of the fills that he plays throughout the song. And I'll throw in a few fills that I think fit pretty well in this song as well.
And there you have it, a classic song, but nice and simple and really, really good if you're a beginner drummer. Shout out to Gary for requesting this awesome song. You're never on the wrong side of anything if you're drumming, mate. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, com